This is Betsy Palmer, and I'm not sorry that I lost my head. It's been worth every moment of it. All right, we are back. Welcome to Without Your Head or Radio. <laughs> <laughs> And we've, we've got the guest right here, right at the beginning of the hour. Yes, indeed. Jason we've, is watching. That's right. We've got the Mud Boy himself. we got uh, the original <laughs> Jason from Friday the 13th. The Boy in the Lake. The Boy in the Lake. He's got he's got many names, but his real name is Ari Lehman. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor and a pleasure. Oh, it's, it's an honor to have you. Hello to all the listeners out there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, which name do you prefer? Do you prefer Ari? Do you prefer, prefer the Mud Boy? Do you prefer uh, Jason? <laughs> Jason seems good. Um, but, you know, you could always, you know, refer to me as, you know, the, the slime kid. Or, you know, perhaps um, Muck Monster is always mm-hmm. good. You know, Seaweed <laughs> Lab. Decaying uh, Vegetation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. It's, 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 it's good. You know, I mean, people people really underestimate how much fun it is to just, you know, kind of slither through the slime, <laughs> you know, <laughs> under the cold waters of Crystal Lake. I mean, that's where I'm living right now. I mean, that's where I am right now. I'm not, you know, I'm in my lair. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, the cavern, the rock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell everybody to check out your website. It's uh, youngjason.com. Yes, I do have internet down here. Yes. I did want to listen. But, but, I, I, but I have lousy television reception. So oh, man. Uh, deep wood caverns have uh, come a long way. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, um, you can, uh, at MySpace, Creatures of Crystal Lake is a, is a great website. It's the, the tour website for... Um, uh, the, the summer tour that's coming up, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, that's going to be alongside Freak Thirteen, um, a great band from Texas, and uh, we invite people to come and check out the website uh, where we have music by both bands and all kinds of wonderful fun stuff. Uh, for people out. haven't uh, heard all this slime on you, hmm? I was going to say uh, for people haven't uh, heard your music, how would you describe it? Well. Um, it's pretty unique. Uh, I'd say it's, it's inspired by punk and uh, especially by the Dead Kennedys and the Bad Brains and um, Tight. <clears throat> the Misfits mm-hmm. and uh, bands like that and Danzig. And we also do Misfits covers and Danzig covers and Dead Kennedys covers, so there you go. But uh, mm-hmm. um, with my own songs are kind of, you know, I guess they're unique, they're up-tempo, they're, I guess you could just call them brutal, they're just brutal, mm-hmm. and that's, I mean, because if I said they're punk or hardcore, or, you know, I hate to get into those kind of things, because, you know, really punk, and that was like the Ramones, and the Bad Brains, and Dead Kennedys, and all those great bands, and there's, there's punk bands out today, but... I think that what I'm doing is a little different, and I think that they would say that too. But uh, so maybe you could just call it like horror rock. It's unique, man. It's 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 brutal. It's it's, it's destructive. Um, just let me know after the interview. We'll it be playing a couple of your songs: Red, 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 and mm-hmm. Monster Love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Red, 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 which uh, you know it, it, it describes the. The, uh, the workings of the mind of Jason, you know, as he stalks through the woods, you know, seeking his prey. Oh. You know, as, as he, I like uh, that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what it's about. It's, uh, it says, alone, alone, alone I roam. Like a dog, I start to foam. All my muscles turn to stone as I bite down to the bone. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, when did you start the band? Well, you know, um, I surfaced, uh, you know, way back uh, in order to, what was it, it was, um, at the Halloween and Haunts trade show here in Chicago. Mm-hmm. The first first Jason gig was actually opening for a fashion show that Elvira was hosting, you know, the Mistress of the Dark. Awesome. So they had this, they had this wild, you know 
fashion show, and we got to open for that, and then we played at Flashback Weekend, and they had us go out and do um, a big um, drive-in movie theater out in Aurora, which was a lot of fun, and then uh, we played in St. Louis and, you know, in Chicago, and and we're getting ready for um, a big event coming up, which I'll tell you guys about later, but... You know, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's really what we're doing is wreaking righteous vengeance in, in a loud way, you know, but really, it's not, it's not, it's not you know, necessarily just music as, as vengeance. Mm-hmm. And we, we are, you know, we, we, we're flashing our way, you know, onto the scene with, the, you know, both punk and metal kind of sound. And, you know, we've got the, a lot of fans. Yeah. So um, let everybody know. Oh, you going to I was just going to ask. Do you sign like much Jason memorabilia while you're touring with First Jason? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm always happy to meet with the fans of Jason Voorhees who started it all in the first place. And uh, um, when I'm on tour, we are often basing the tours on conventions where I'm doing appearances as. Jason and uh, meeting with all the great fans who are awesome and they're always like really supportive and really dedicated and if it wasn't for those fans there would be no first Jason because well I mean first of all it's when the fans go and see Friday the 13th that God brings Jason back to life every time I mean let's face it mm-hmm. but beyond that I mean I was out there I was originally doing another style of music. I was in, like, reggae music, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what I was doing. Kind of like the Bad Brains, then, you know? Yeah, well, sure. I had seen the Bad Brains back in the right. day, but I had gotten into, like, full-fledged reggae music. I was touring all over the world. I went to Europe and Africa, even, you know? And that's oh. where my head was at, when one day I got on my computer and a very nice uh, person, Eric Lee Nash, who runs uh, Crystal Lake Collectibles, well, he just happened to write me and said, uh, did you sign this autograph here? And I was like, gosh, I've never signed an autograph. And he was like, well, someone sold me this. So I said, uh, well, <laughs> I guess that that's a forgery. So that, but that brought it to my attention. <laughs> that brought it to my attention that... Perhaps people would like me to sign autographs. So, so here Eric said, you know, uh, come and uh, actually he invited me to the first show that I got to, which was the Schiller Theater Show in New Jersey, which you guys are probably familiar with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was there, and they said Betsy was going to be there, so I was really excited. I got there. First person I saw was Tom Savini. I'm like, oh my god, you know, it's like, I. It was, it was incredible. I'm, I'm just as much a fan of Tom Savini as any of us, and and Betsy. And so when I got downstairs, there was like 200 people waiting to see me, and I couldn't believe it. So it kind of dawned on me that I'd been, you know, remiss in uh, not attending these things. And I, I certainly uh, have had a good time. And and at first I had my own CCs there, you know, for my band. And the horror fans were very nice about it. They were like, you know, this is cool. This music is great. You know, I've never listened to reggae. But then after a while, you know, some of the fans said, listen, you know, man, come on. We're Jason. <laughs> do you like Pantera? And I'm like, yeah, Pantera's dope. And I'm like, you feel like, do you like this band? That's the Misfits. Do you like this? So, you know, people just kind of got it in my head. It was the fans who kind of thought it up for me. And then I said, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. So that's when I started really kind of trying to absorb the music and digging on all the bands. And I realized that there's so much great music and so many great bands out there that I just want to hit it right. And, uh, you know, I feel that we're getting there now. And one of the big changes is that now I don't play keyboard in the band. I'm just singing as a front man. We have two guitarists. And uh, it's strong. The band was featured in... uh, an independent horror movie called Thanksgiving. I don't know if you guys heard about that oh. one. Hmm. No. Oh, Thanksgiving is an X in the middle. Yeah, they have a MySpace um, and they have a website. Uh, but if you put T 
T-H-A-N-X. Oh, okay. T-I-V-I-N-G. That's, and uh, it was it was produced um, by uh, Bobby Ray Akers uh, down in, um, and Richard Novosak down in um, St. Louis. And uh, they did a great job on it. And uh, that, uh, they, they, the song Red, Red, Red is in that movie. And so that, song, that, that movie, I'm also in the movie, too. I play this character, Delbert Eaton, who actually gets eaten because he's <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> it's about a bunch of uh, backwoods cannibals who like, mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. what happens mm-hmm. is this, okay? A bunch of kind of wise-ass filmmaker kids, right, are out there, they're trying to find a location to shoot their movie. So there's a lot of like scenes seen through their camera that they're carrying, you know, that kind of thing. Like, um, and then, okay, they kind of come upon this great location out in the woods, but they don't realize that they're also trespassing on the land of these kind of ghoul cannibals who are living out there who kind of, you know, <laughs> begin to <laughs> make short work of them. And I play this guy, Delbert Eaton, who is like, uh, He's like, you know, uh, your, your stock character from, like, Scooby-Doo. He's like, you kids, get off this land. You shouldn't be here. <laughs> you know. And I, get out of here. And I, I had a shotgun. I got to shoot a shotgun in this movie. And I did my own stunt. I fell off a cliff. And it was a lot of fun. So there's some great actors in it. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check that out. That sounds good. That's yeah, like the... Definitely. <laughs> That's one uh that's one holiday they haven't made a horror movie about yet until now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about that the other week. Uh huh. Sh- you know the funny thing is, and here's a real here's some horror dish for you. The um you know, this grindhouse movie has um in between the reels there's um ads for, for horror movies that don't exist. Oh really? <laughs> Yes, and I just found out that Eli Roth is directing one of those commercials, and he's his movie is called Thanksgiving, <laughs> but it's not it's not real, and this is like so bizarre because we had completed the movie before we you know we haven't even heard about it. So. Wow! And you know his doesn't have an X in it; it's just Thanksgiving, just like the regular title. Hmm. Uh, someone here in the chat room says we need a. A leap year movie for February 29th. <laughs> <laughs> leap year? Oh, that's a good idea. I, I like that, too. Why don't you get a caller here? Who is this? Hey, this is... Hello? Hi, um, this is 640 from the um, chat room, and I just had a question for the original Jason. What, what does he think of the um, new Jason, the Freddy vs. Jason movies, and how they turned out? Well, hey, how you doing there, man? That's a good question. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the... Uh, I, I actually think they did a, a, a fine job. Um, I was uh, pleasantly surprised to see that they um, did their best to keep the storyline intact. And um, I think that uh, even the portrayal of the Swamp Boy, the Boy in the Lake, the slime monster, he was, you know, with its kind of like quivering thing. And you know, that was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I thought it was okay. You know, what did you think? Oh, I, I love it, personally. It's cool. Right on, man. I mean, you know what it is? Um, Ken Kersinger, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we we like, we like had all the Jasons got together, and, you know, <laughs> Kane Hodder has his fans, and yeah. Kane is always, like, I've known Kane since way back at that show the theater. So we didn't know, you know, Ken... Ken you know, and people would come to me and say, what do you think about Ken and blah, blah, blah. And I thought the performance was excellent. So, you know, I had to meet the man. But within about 30 seconds of meeting Ken Kersinger, you realize that you have to like him because he's a genuine and a very kind person, even though, you know, he's, he's a big-ass mofo. But, he, <laughs> you know. Well, that's what I thought you were going to say, like, you have to like him or he'll kill you. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's how it feels with Kane sometimes. Kane, or or maybe maybe with my good buddy Andrew Bernarski, who played Leatherface. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like, <laughs> yeah. but, but no, I mean, actually, they're all really nice people. But Ken Kersinger, 
is a really nice person. So it was like if we did Monster Mania, and they had seven Jasons there. And that's the first wow. time that I met uh, Ken. And it was, it was like, right, it was like, wow. So, you know. I saw, I, uh, just quick, I saw Andrew's going to be in the uh, new uh, Dracula movie. So that oh, yeah, that's right. That. It was filmed in England. And let me tell you, Andrew Bernarski is an actor to watch out for, man. That guy is top notch. Mm-hmm. He is top notch. And when I was just at the Collector GMAX in Manchester, England, we were out there, man, and there was this band from Seattle that was, was there in the U.K. doing a tour. So they said, come on, you guys, you know, Jason and Leatherface, you got to come check us out. We're playing tonight. And the band is called Steaming Wolf Penis. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and they have this movie called Jerk Beast. And this their drummer wears this huge beast outfit, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, I mean, it's, it's like insane. It has like a fan in the top because, you know, it's like one of those crazy things. <laughs> but it's like a crazy punk band. And, you know, they're, they're nuts. But so we're like that, you know, we'll come down. So, you know, here's like, you know, we're all getting ready in our, you know, metal gear. We got down there. It's like pouring rain, you know, in England, you know, get inside one of these little brick punk clubs, you know, and like everybody smashed on whiskey and beer. And like mm-hmm. the first band, the freaking uh, guitarist wasn't even wearing any pants. It was like, it was crazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, he just had his guitar in front of him. And so we're all like, what the, what the? And then so we found our friends, and then we got up on stage. They started playing, and Andrew and I got up, and actually I said, we did, um, we did, um, Die, Die, My Darling mm-hmm. by the Misfits, you know, Die, 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 My Darling. Yep. And so I was singing that with Andrew, and, you know, I would sing a line, and then I, you know, he would say, you know, just shut your pretty mouth. And then I would say, die, die, die. die. You know. So then, like, uh, the crowd went crazy. I, I got uh, crowd served. It was nuts, man. But Andrew, <laughs> Andrew was sick, and he was all like, dude, man, I'm, uh, that's a cool, like, I had the Christopher Lee Dracula shirt on. And he was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to play Dracula. I'm going to play Dracula tomorrow, man. And that's where he was going to go do it. And uh, I heard that it's an excellent production. Cool. Yeah, I saw the uh, you guys think, like the new TCM. Oh, the uh, yeah. the um, the remake or the uh, or the beginning. The beginning. I have actually I haven't seen the beginning yet. I, I actually have the DVD, but I haven't seen it yet. But uh, I really enjoyed the uh, the remake. Cool. Yeah. What, what well, did you think? Of the, what, what do you think about? I think uh, you like. I think you like the beginning even more. To mm-hmm. Say the truth, man, because it is sick. It is it's gnarly, man. It's, it's <laughs> Listen. Uh, what do you think about the talks? Of, I don't know if it's a remake, reimagining, whatever they're calling it, of uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Um. Well, uh, I'll tell you something. Um. You know, Platinum Dunes is supposedly going to be um uh doing it this year, and you know, it's up again. You know, it's like once again they they keep uh, saying that they want to do it, and um, I, I encourage it, of course. Um. The funny thing is that I have my own storyline, of course, what I think really happened, but uh, I don't know if that will ever reach the ears of the public, but it may. Mm-hmm. But um, but they, um, you know, uh, I, I think that uh, they are going to do a remake of the first movie. Like, instead of, at first they thought they were going to do some kind of a prequel or something, but they're saying now that they're just going to basically just remake Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think do you think it'll still be um, the mother as a killer? Do you think they'll have more Jason in it? Well, uh, some people might expect that. Kind of, kind of blend it to, I think it's going to kind of leave, maybe be like part one and two a little bit, wherein yeah. he becomes the killer. But, you know, I hate to speculate. I hate to speculate because yeah. I don't right. know what... <laughs> You know, I think that's been the whole thing all along, is that they're really trying to find a script that that works for them. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> my point is, I, I I have an idea for the story, which I think would define the character. And, uh, you know, of course, 
you know, maybe I should just move to L.A. and knock on their door. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll see. But yeah, I'm 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 hopeful. I think that you know I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, looking forward to it. Are uh, you got a question, John? I was just wondering. Uh, th- did you participate in the uh, Crystal Lake Memories book? Oh yeah, that yeah. was that the uh, uh, Peter Brack book. Mm-hmm. Uh, How did and, I- uh, <laughs> that was a great effort. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that luckily coincided with the. Uh, like just at the same time that I was getting into um, doing horror conventions, Peter was um, doing a lot of interviews. He was on the scene. He really thoroughly researched his book. Um, it's great, you know. It's a great book. It's a great, you know. It goes beyond being a coffee table book, but you know, it, it looks like that. It's funny, mm-hmm. you know. It's got the, it's professionally done. I'd say it's the definitive. You know, we'll work to date on, on uh, and uh, I sign it all the time, that's for sure. We'll bring it all the time. And it's hard to get a copy of. No, oh, yeah. like, I can't yeah. get, I can't get a box of those. I mean, forget it. <laughs> I think they just released a second edition, so. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's what I heard. It's just pretty fast. I mean, good for them. Talk about signing those. Uh, what's like the strangest thing anyone's uh, asked you to sign? <laughs> Well, you know, like, uh, you know, various uh, body parts <laughs> like that. That's always requested, you know. There's, like, sign my baby. Mm-hmm. And I signed babies. I signed a baby's head, you know. <laughs> of course, um, the famous thing that we've all signed is Joe Netter's ass. <laughs> I mean, you know about that, right? Joe Netter's ass. That's, like... That's the big initiation <laughs> sign Joe Netter's ass. Of course, the funny thing is Joe has a has a tattoo of his face tattooed on his ass. <laughs> you, know, you know, but with but with his face, it's hard to tell the difference. No, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> well, no. So the first time I was at, uh, I think it was at a flashback weekend, and God bless him, Matt McGorry was even there. I remember seeing him there, and. Uh, we were watching, I think in, because uh, you know, a flashback weekend, which is uh, a great um, horror convention here in Chicago, which they do um, uh, uh, drive in movie type thing outdoors in the parking lot. So they have a huge oh, wow. inflatable, like, inflatable screen. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was I, we were watching uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, man. Mm-hmm. And it was like I saw it right there, and then I went inside, and there and and they were like, yeah, go upstairs. Sid, Sid's having a party, you know. Sid and his uh, his lovely uh, wife and and uh, and uh, business uh, assistant uh, <laughs> Sue were up there having their little party, and mm-hmm. so uh, Sid Haig was there. He's like, you know, I just saw him on the screen. He's like. 500 feet high, and then I opened the door. He's like, "Sit down, have a drink." <laughs> but first, but first, you gotta sign Joe Netter's ass. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And you know, because here I am, you know, I was kind of new to the scene. Oh, they all leaned over, like Sid, Bill Mosley, all those people like, waiting to see. I'm like, "All right, you know, I'll do it." <laughs> they were laughing at me. <laughs> I, I, you know, now I'm, I'm steely now. I'll sign asses. <laughs> Bring it on. I just hope uh, they didn't take that signed baby and put it up on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, he's, gonna, gonna, he's, he's gonna find a counterfeit of it. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> hey, babies, that's where I stopped. See, like, you know, children and babies must not be, you know, Jason can't look at <laughs> You know my song, man, you know, it's the anti, is it the You Better Run song? Mm-hmm. You know, You Better Run, which is like, see, Jason's like real anti, like, child abuse. So it's like, it says, uh, it goes up. Child beat up at the run, at the run, run away. Those chains are gonna make you pay. You better run, and you run as a child molest. Run, run away, and never rest. And if you use abuse and body beat a child, those chains are gonna go buck wild. 
he will make you know how it feels to be small. How you're just a coward after all. You better run. You better run. You better run. Here comes first Jason. Excellent. <laughs> Just a little taste of the sound there for you, Jim. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff, man. And for your listeners. Oh, when you're signing stuff and you meet the, uh, the fans, uh, are they surprised by, like, uh, the mustache when they first see you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I mean, you know, people are surprised by me having hair at all. Like, they walk <laughs> and in and they're like, oh. They're all just like, wait, you have hair. I mean, you know, I have actually had this situation where people have been like, you're not him. How can you be him? A lot of plastic surgery. Yeah. I mean, well, come on. You know, so a lot of, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, come on now, people. Like, you know, they don't do the math. It's like, they're just like, wait. So they, they're stuck. They're like, you're not the little Jason. But you're not big like big hockey match Jason. Like they're just stuck, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, but it's okay, you know. I'm like the secret monster. Yeah, you've been to the hair club for men. <laughs> That's it. But um, hair yeah, you know, the, the uh, Kane Hodder had a funny crack. Cause one time we were um, we were at that Monster Mania show with all the Jasons at a big panel. And he asked me some questions, and I was like, blah 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 blah. And Kane's like, thank you, Captain Morgan. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fitting. Like that. Yes. So I guess, you know, so I you guess know, that, that was my drink at the bar. Later. <laughs> you know, uh, J- Jason's like the, uh, you know, the crazy guy in the woods. He's a killer and stuff, but uh, he never had any facial hair. Doesn't really seem like a guy that'd be uh, shaving a lot. <laughs> really, man, he's not... He's not too manly. I mean, but I mean, I guess we, do we ever check it, you know, to see if Jason? I mean, yeah, you're right. When they took the thing off, what have you been shaving? <laughs> he's out there. He's like he's walking off the hood on his head, and he still takes the time to shave. That's, That's right. right. He should be all hairy, man. That's a good point. Yeah, I agree with well, that. He goes a little extra, you know. He, you know, he takes the time. <laughs> he's a little shave. <laughs> he's like, look. These great actors, I have to shave too. No, come on, please. Yeah, maybe he's more aerodynamic without the the facial hair. Oh the my God, I don't know what is what 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 is it with Jason? <laughs> you know, they they don't they need they never really define the face after me. They they, they try. Mm-hmm. They, they're trying, and then they did the the part ten thing, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, and he turned back to a kid in uh. Jason takes Manhattan. Think they should have made him look uh, more like you from the original. Well, you know, I saw that, and I thought, you know, it was like one of the first times they really kind of just they were just going. It's kind of a fantasy script there, you know. It wasn't like they were really trying to adhere too much to the storyline. So mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there wasn't talk of. Betsy, I mean, of Pamela or, you know, such things, really, you know, I mean, they talked about it, I think, in the first scene or something, but not really too much, so, you know, I I think that uh, at a certain point, it just becomes a character, and that, that that character can, you know, as you say, Jason is a madman in the woods, you know, there's certain things about Jason, I mean, he's, he's silent, you know, mm-hmm. he's not, like, screaming at you, you know, he's not... He's, he's, but it's like there's no way you could possibly reason with Jason. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's it. And I think one of the things that's actually a good point because he's like a child trapped in the body of a huge monster, right? Right. That's one of the whole things. And actually, in my storyline, the main point. But no, nope, don't want to get aside there. But the <laughs> thing is that it, he is like. A child, and so maybe, hey, no facial hair. That kind of makes sense. Like, right. he's, he's, you know, he's like a huge child who's like, you know, I must have my way, you know. And, and <laughs> it's like they boring. Because he's not, you know, he's the thing about Jason, he's not an evil character who premeditates evil behavior. He just sees something wrong and destroys it, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just a instantaneous reaction. And, uh, Again, he's also not, 
she's not really connected too much with like underworld or mythology or stuff like that. It's a very, you know, basic character. Uh, we got another caller here. Who is this? Hey guys, this is Casino Man. How's it going? Oh, good. You're on air with uh, Ari Lehman. Hi, Ari. How's hey. it going? Good. Good. Uh, How are you doing? I'm doing very well myself. Thank you for asking. Uh, I've got two questions for you. <laughs> um, the first question is, who do you think, um, in your opinion, was more responsible for the, the success of Friday the 13th, uh, Sean S. Cunningham or uh, Steve Miner? Ooh, <laughs> that's a tough question. I would answer by saying Tom Savini. No, but <laughs> 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 that's a cop-out answer. No, the, um, the story there is interesting. Sean, it was really Sean's baby. And um, the fact of the matter is that um, after completion, I think that they had done a test somewhere, and he was a little bit um, wary about the um, whether he was going to make back, you know, his, his money. You know what I'm saying? And actually, Steve Miner sailed in at that point and said, um, you know, he bought, he in essence bought the film from Sean. And so, in the end, I mean, I, I, I got it. This is a, this is true. That Steve really did well on Friday the Thirteenth. Sean made back his money, but when all of a sudden it did so well. I think Sean was a bit dismayed. <laughs> and then Steve went on to do House with that money. Mm -hmm. and then it, But then, as I heard from Tom, who had no reason to tell me, uh, you know, anything with BS, he said that then Sean did make, they did make their money back on part four. Mm -hmm. was, part, was it part four? Not part three, part four, right? Uh, that Steve yeah. Miner directed? It was uh, No, 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 Sean. That Sean came back, it was like... Uh, yeah, it was part four. Yeah, yeah. That's when they called it the uh, um, Final Friday or something. Like yeah, that, that was it, yeah. Right, and um, so that that's when, no, and then they did really well. But according to Tom, that's when Sean made his, what did he call it, uh... Porsche money or something like that, and then he, he got out to California and, you know, lived happily ever after. So so it all worked out in the end. But, I mean, did that answer your question? It was really Sean. Like, I worked on a movie that they both, that Steve Miner produced and, and Sean directed, and Steve was much more on the site. And um, with Friday, it was really Sean who was doing just, like, just about everything. Yeah, that answers my question. Um, and just as a side note, before I ask my second question, uh, Steve Miner was actually scheduled to direct a 3D Godzilla movie in the early 80s, but that fell through uh, for a variety Whoa. of reasons. <laughs> Any of you know that? Godzilla movie. No, I never he, heard about that one. Yeah, uh, William Stout um, was hired as the production designer, and he did some storyboards, and uh, Fred Decker... Uh, who on, went on to write and direct, I think, uh, the movie The Monster Squad was uh, hired as the screenwriter. But yeah, okay. they, they were in uh, pre-production, and that movie just never uh, got made. Yeah. But my second point um, is just very quick, casino, uh, Before you go to that one, Casino Man, just, uh, there's a 20th anniversary of uh, The Monster Squad. It, I, I'm not sure of the name of it, but there's like a horror con going on. And they've got like all the uh, cast from the uh, from Monster Squad for the 20th anniversary. That's right, I heard about that. That's yeah, right. that should be pretty cool. All right, go on, Casino Man, start. Very cool. Well... Um, I, I've heard a lot of talk about Tom Savini tonight, and he certainly is a very talented makeup artist, but uh, my favorite makeup artist of all time is Rob Bottin. And I just wanted to ask Ari if he's, number one, ever heard of Rob Bottin, and, uh, you know, if so, what did he think of his makeup work? He did uh, the makeup work in John Carpenter's The Thing mm -hmm. and, uh, and Total one. Recall, RoboCop, those sorts of movies. Well, um, I think that those are all fantastic examples of... of, um, of the genre. I mean, I you know, I don't know, um, I don't know if you could really parallel the two individuals too much. I mean, they, he, he, it's a different, different kind of style, and um, I think uh, you know, 
my experience with Tom, you know, uh, was personal being that, you know, I was like 12, 13 years old, and, you know, they brought me to his studio. It was like going into Merlin's workshop, you know, there was like, <laughs> there was like severed heads and, you know, decapitations and, you know, uh, disemboweled car. <laughs> it was like, it had like everything. It was like, it was like everything. And then they'd be like, sword fighting, like, that's what they did, like, they would ride motorcycles and sword fight, that was, like, their big thing, <laughs> like, with, like, fencing sabers, uh -huh. and, like, so you'd have to be ready to defend yourself at any moment, and then, like, um, I remember one time, Tom put, like, like, we had a full plaster on my head, you know, mm -hmm. so he was like, here, listen to this music, and he put on, um, Jim Morrison and the Doors, People Are Strange. It was like, you know, people are strange, when you're strange. I was like, man, this is so weird, you know? And I was like 13, you know? And it was the 70s, you know? It was, it was wild time, no doubt. It was wild. <laughs> but um, in terms of comparing them, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that ultimately uh, Tom probably respects uh, the work of, of, of all the... All, Right. Makeup artist out there, mm -hmm. you know. He comes from the Dick Smith. Dick Smith is who was his mentor, but you know, now techniques have become so much more advanced. I think one of the things that's so great about Tom's work is that he uses a lot of those techniques that they even use at the best haunted houses, mm -hmm. wherein maybe the effects weren't so realistic, but the way they presented them by distracting you at a certain moment and misdirecting your attention at precisely the right moment and by studying people's reactions then they were able to maximize what they what they were working with which I always think is, is you know the greatest you know when you can take what you have and make the most of it he used to go to the theater and just watch people's reactions to that final scene he would just it, he would go for the last 10 minutes and just watch the theater backwards to see people jump out of their seats. <laughs> uh, thanks. You know, anything else you've seen, man? Um, the only thing I have to say is, you know, you know, when it comes to horror movies, you can think of a lot of scary things. But I think the scariest thing I can think of, you know, if a horror movie actually came to life and were happening in real life, would be if Jason were uh, playing a game with Bigfoot tag with me. But I guess that's a subject for a different time. Uh, in any case, <laughs> thanks, thanks, guys, for having me on. And uh, it's scary. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks very much, guys. It's been it's been fun. Thanks very yeah. much. Thanks a lot for calling in, man. You're welcome. Bye. Yeah. Those are good questions. <laughs> um, talk about like the the makeup and stuff. Um, uh, did any of it like come off while you were underwater, or like uh, did it get heavier? Like did it soak up the water? Um, no, I mean it's like he, it, it was it was like you know uh, prosthetic, <laughs> and we didn't stay underwater too long. You know, wasn't, Excuse me. Wasn't yep. really super designed for for uh, durability. It's like you know they had me. Um, basic concept was the first scene was going to be the whole thing. It was just going to be I drown, and that's it. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. like Jason, without any muck on him, drowned, and that was going to be it. Just the part where she says, my Jason, mm -hmm. my son, mm -hmm. right? And that's it. And then Sean said, you know what, we need a new ending to this movie, because he had seen Carrie. And this, mo this ending wasn't in the script. The famous ending was not in the original script. Mm -hmm. So he said, Oh, um, somebody, you know, he, he put it to the cast and crew. Come on, give me some ideas. What do you guys have ideas for an ending? And it was Tom Savini who came up with that ending idea because he said, look, we can show the makeup again. So then they had me come back to the studio and work on it again. And that time we, you know, we created it to look disgusting. Like they wanted it to look both repulsive but that you still had sympathy for Jason somehow, you know? Right. So, so he created that, you know, and then I went, uh, when we got to the set, he actually had me increase the effect. He, he had us dredge actual pond scum 
you know, I mean, that's why I am, you know, the slime <laughs> boy himself, because we would go down and with a slime bucket <laughs> and get Ooh, some pond scum. Bring the slime I mean, bucket. <laughs> who can just say that slime bucket and pond scum, you know, in a sentence, you know, and, and it's actually part of a normal sentence. But anyway, so I was using that slime bucket to get all the pond scum, so we poured it all over me. And then uh, he also mixed it in with all kinds of, uh, like he took his, um, his recipe for blood and, you know, the, the kind of gooey stuff. And then he also laid latex over that and then waited for that to dry and then peeled that back so it looked like flesh coming off, you know. And so when I went under, it would be for a very short amount of time because he was concerned about how long it could, uh, it could last under water. But it was just a matter of just wait for the bubbles to clear and just get mm -hmm. in the water. One thing is he did not want me to talk to Adrian King, Adrian King, the lovely Adrian King, who was mm -hmm. on the set, and, you know, I was like, wow, I get to meet the scene with her. You know, I thought as an actor, you know, you go, you meet somebody, hey, we're doing a scene together, I'm going to drag you into the water, you know, <laughs> but, um, no, he said, don't even talk to her, don't talk to her, I don't want her to know you, I don't want her to see that, and especially... When you get to the set on the day of with the makeup on, don't go anywhere near. Mm -hmm. So it's like the only time she sees you is when you're actually just getting in the water. Mm -hmm. She even had me get in the water first, and then she came out into the water. So it's like she wasn't, you know. Yeah, she's seen she it for the first time. Yeah. And so when I jumped out, out, man, she was pretty scared, dude. Right. Like she, like, she, like, jumped out, my mm -hmm. friend. She jumped out of the boat, man, and she said, shit, you know, she was like, what the fuck, you know, she was scared, man, and so that 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 shot was blown, man, because she was just like, you know, what the heck, because, you know, I was all, like, into it, I was like, ah, you know, like, I really jumped out of the water at her, you know, and then so Sean's all like, you know, I think they used some of that, but he's like, when they went to do it again, the second time he said, you know, kind of, don't will overdo it and just kind of make it a little mellow. And, you know, and then they, they, they dried her off. They blow-dried her hair, you know. And then um, she got back in the boat. And the funny thing is when you look at her face, you cannot tell that she doesn't, that she knows. In other words, it looks like she does not know that I'm there. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, so she really has the look in her face like that. But, you know. So you think, you know, if they didn't have that, like, I didn't, you think uh, the movie would have lost some of its uh, impact? I think, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think that one of the things about that movie, and I think that a lot of horror movies rely on a, just a stunning ending, because that's part of the whole concept of horror in the sense that, you know, it's about death and death's inevitability and finality. And, like... Like, if you look at, uh, I don't know, House on Haunted Hill, you know, with Vincent mm -hmm. Price. Yeah. And at the end, he comes out with that skeleton, you know, death right. at the very end, and mm -hmm. you're like, what the heck is this? I mean, it's like, you know, a lot of different horror movies have some freak ending. And, I mean, I definitely ending. think I that, that I mean, I think that, yeah, oh, yeah. And then uh, the, 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 the final scene being so jarring and so... I think what was important about it is that it got people to tell other people, you know, go see this movie. Right. Because they almost wanted to bring their friend there just to just to look at them, you know, at the end to see if they would jump too, you know. It was, like, it was a real... It was a real thing. It was like... It was like... Uh, I mean, for me, it was a thrill too because it's like when you scare somebody, you know how you feel scared too? Like you get that little thrill, you know. Mm -hmm. Like... It, it's just like that, and I think that people had a lot of fun with the movie, and, um, you know, uh, people could say this or that about other movies that it drew from. I mean, it definitely, they they were definitely preceded by and, and influenced by uh, the Italian movies at that time, you know, all the Italian horror movies. Like, um, if you look in the movie Phenomenon by mm. Dario Argento, mm -hmm. You remember the final scene in that movie? Yeah. Um, 
the great character played by, okay, come on, what's her name? Uh, the great the actress Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer Connelly mm-hmm. plays the young girl. She's like only 12 or whatever. She controls the, uh, the nature. And she gets like bugs to attack and birds to attack and all this shit. But anyway, at the end, she gets in a boat. And she goes off into the water. And this little kind of mutant kid comes out. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, but this little mutant kid comes out mm-hmm. and is, like, trying to get her in the boat. And then he falls in the water at one point, and the water, there's a fire somehow, I guess, oh, because it's a motorboat and the cast is on the water, it ignites. Yeah. And then he pulls her into the water. At one point, it's a very similar scene. So, I mean, I think, you know, for you horror buffs out there, it's a good reason to get the Dario Argento movie phenomenon, oh, yeah. in which uh, you will see that at the end. And then there's other movies, um, there's other movies from Italy that, uh, that mm-hmm. had some of the same, you know, mm-hmm. that influenced Sean. Obviously, Sean was watching them, because those movies were like, you know, 1978, 77, and then he made it in 79, 80, you know. Right. Well, everybody's influenced uh, from something. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, someone here in our chat room, Gogo, he wants to know um, if you like the Alice Cooper's Man Behind the Mask song from Friday the 13th, Part 6. Oh, yeah, there. of course, man. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great song. I, I worship Alice Cooper, man. We are not worthy, man. Please. And, uh, that's C.J. Graham who, um, who did the video with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, come on. Alice Cooper is the originator of horror rock in a lot of ways. I mean, he's the one who he took the metaphor, you know, further than anybody did. I mean, you know, Ozzy, Ozzy kind of had it in him, but Alice was all about the whole thing that led up to, like, you know, Marilyn Manson and all this oh, yeah. that's going on today, you know. I mean, the horror rock scene is just getting out of hand right now. It's like, it's, it's I mean, I'm very glad to see it thriving, you know. It's just kind of like a an onslaught to destroying, you know, Venues one at a time. Well, I'll let everybody know you got the uh, the vampire uh, uh, the movie release party. It's coming up uh, February twenty fourth, and you guys are going to be there. Hmm. That's right. That's right. I did the soundtrack for this wonderful documentary about the first screen queen, the horror vixen, the glamour ghoul herself, Vampira, whose name is Myla Nurmi, who's a really hip chick. Back in the 50s, 60s, and she um, she went out with James Dean and Marlon Brando. I mean, she was cool, man. And uh, so I did the soundtrack, and, you know, they're going to show it at Fangoria, Chicago. So we figured that uh, Kevin Shawn Michaels, the director, said, why don't we do some kind of party? And here in Chicago, there's Rose Red Productions. And so they got us together this Vampira the Movie Bash, which we're going to have uh, first Jason is going to play, The Massacres, and also the great Chicago band Johnny Vomit, who should not be missed for their great song Head Handle, one of my faves. <laughs> and um, they, are, they are awesome. And, um, you know, it's, uh, they're gonna, there's going to be a... Um, Best dressed vampirette contest. So any anybody who's in the Chicago area, or if you're going to be coming to either the Fangoria Weekend of Horrors, uh, that's February 23rd through 25th, or the Halloween and Haunt Trade Show, which is simultaneous, um, <clears throat> we will be handing out flyers. So just look for Vampira. We'll have girls dressed as Vampira walking around, handing out these flyers, oh. and then we have posters with the Vampire on it. Just Pete Wonderful John's stuff. interest. <laughs> and you can always come off. Oh, well, come on out. I mean, we, uh, we, if you go, you can also check out um, the MySpace uh, Vampire movie. You know, uh, <clears throat> that's a good place to check it out. We have a lot of information there about, uh, about this film. And also in the film is... Uh, Jerry Only from The Misfits, mm-hmm. and the great Sid Haig, and Forrest Ackerman, and Bill Mosley. Oh, Debbie man, Forrest Ackerman. That's right, man. I mean, that's... that's yeah. Some of us want to go to the Ackerman. 
Oh yeah, me too. Have you, you know, this must be a real this must be a real horror interview if Forrest Ackerman was mentioned. <laughs> oh, no doubt. <laughs> I still have all my old famous monsters. So, you know. <laughs> that's yeah, that's pretty <laughs> awesome that Ackerman has has a MySpace. I have to say. That's the best. Yeah. That blew my mind. Uh huh. Have you ever yes, been to Ackerman? Man, no. I haven't been there. I got to admit, man. What is that about? Well, it's like his. It's just his house, but he um. He like takes people onto like tours of his house and all his uh, memorabilia. Yeah, it's kind of like a museum in his house. It, it just looks so cool. Whoa! We all have to go. Uh, with no, that, man, I don't know. You know, I eat up the old horror stuff. I'm like, forget oh, it. I'm also it. like, a, I'm I'm way into the German silent horrors, mm. Nosferatu, oh. Caligari. Um, your Golem is one of my favorite movies. Oh, that was time. awesome. You know, I mean, and then I just love all that stuff. Lon Chaney, you know, I mean, oh. I just... Yeah, I, I, just the, I just got the... I just got the Lon Chaney uh, collection because uh, Tom Savini talked about it on... Uh, it was like one of the... Uh, I think it was on the Dawn of the Dead um, commentary track, and that was like his hero growing up was uh, Lon Chaney, and that stuff's just great. Oh, yeah. You no, know, Lon Chaney is so amazing, and even... His non horror roles, like if you mm-hmm. look at um, the Ace of Hearts or or the oh, the movie I love called uh, uh, The Unknown, in which he plays Alonzo the Armless, yeah, um, the guy who throws daggers with his feet. Mm-hmm. But 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 you know, I mean, I don't want to ruin, ruin the movie. Right, that <laughs> that's a great movie. twist at the end of the movie. Oh my God, and that. <laughs> That ending scene, oh my! Well, that is just <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah. And the laugh he gives—that's I mean, just great stuff. I mean, the simplicity of some of those films is just so striking, and like they did so much with so little, and like <laughs> I don't know. But then again, I think um, I've heard that this new um, David Lynch. Um, oh gosh, uh, what's the name of the film? I got it right here. Um, his new movie. He did it all on digital um, digital uh, video. That's what I heard. Uh, what's the name of this movie? It's called The Inland Inland Empire. Hmm. No, I haven't heard of that one. No. Well, it's just the new starring Laura Dern. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, Inland Empire. But I'm just, all I'm trying to say is that he uses just digital um, video. So maybe we're getting to another time period wherein it's like the simplicity factor is going to come in again. Like mm-hmm. the limitations of certain medium mm-hmm. will be, you know, will be stretched because people can afford them. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you know, like look at YouTube. You know, I mean, I, I, I think we're on the cusp of a whole new wave in filmmaking and horror in particular. Mm-hmm. Did you have a question? Are you guys question? making any movies? I bet you one of you guys <laughs> is probably making a movie or, or involved with the. Yeah, we talk about it every week on here. All, uh, different ideas for uh, slashers, and, mm-hmm. uh, different holidays that there hasn't been a. Uh, now, now we find out there is a Thanksgiving movie, so we got to cross that one off the list. Now we're moving the clown <laughs> talk. The Easter Bunny. <laughs> the Easter Bunny, it's right. The Iron Man movie. Yeah, that could be bad. I was thinking instead of a slasher movie, we needed a smasher movie where a guy uses a blunt instrument to kill people. Oh, there was one. Oh, man, what is that movie? Oh man! Uh, Everybody's running my ideas. Oh no! No, it wasn't like the big meat tenderizer, though. Yeah, my idea was a, was a was a crazy shark right. with a meat tenderizer. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is bikini bloodbath, and they have the, the the what is he? The evil chef? No, no, oh, I can't remember. Oh yes. my god! Everybody's yeah. running my ideas. Bikini bloodbath, <laughs> bikini bloodbath. They have it's the evil. What's his name? He's the evil chef. I forgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> he runs around. He's mean. Oh, he man. Got. i got to see that one. Scary. No, but you guys, you know, that shouldn't stop you, man. They, they, uh, you know, I, I think everybody, that's this, this time period, is, that's what it's about. Everybody is going to come out with some ideas. Mm-hmm. And what's going to happen is, sure, there's going to be a lot of stuff, which is like, not so great, but then there's going to be some stuff which is amazing, which is going to change everything and mm-hmm. new ideas. You know? Yeah, I was, uh, we had him on the show. Um, said Adam Green, 
Uh, we're looking forward to a hatchet that's coming out. That's got uh, Kane Hodder. You know, as oh, yeah. Kane no, Kane. Kane told me great stuff about that movie. Mm-hmm. Kane he always up on everything. He knows things before we tell him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kane, Kane is Kane is on top. Well, I mean, I'm like you know, I get I got the uh, the uh, the the monster uh, hotline here. You know, <laughs> <laughs> got to let me in on on what's going on. But um, you know, the uh, the other thing that's happening with us is uh, the Creatures of Crystal Lake tour. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, this is you know, here's here's you know imagination gone amok and wild and, you know, absolute destruction, you know, without any, you know, mitigation. I mean, it's like destruction has a new middle name, First Jason. It's like uh, this tour is going to happen from uh, June 29th of 2007 to Friday the 13th of July, ending here in Chicago, starting in Texas, and we're going to be going up through the Midwest, we're going to go up to Indianapolis, um, where we're going to be part of the Horror Hound Weekend up there. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, we're touring together with it's first Jason, my band, along with this band Freak 13, who's from Texas, a great gore metal band with a great chick singer, Ravinica Rose, and uh, that band is led by Chester Moore and... Uh, you know, it's just an honor, and we're, we're really looking forward to it. And you can check out the MySpace at uh, uh, Creatures of Crystal Lake, and, uh, you know, you can hear the music there and check out all the insanity. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, we're going to be, you know, probably coming to some towns that uh, some of the listeners are, are in. So prepare for destruction. <laughs> don't put all the links up on uh, Without Your Head here. I'll put all the links oh, up yeah. on our website. So everybody can uh, check all that stuff out. Uh, someone here ruined my idea, ruined the Easter thing. Uh, Ryron Voorhees here in our chat room says that Critters 2 took place on Easter. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, well, Critters 2. But, you know, you need something like, I was thinking you could have one about an evil Easter egg. There you go. <laughs> Goes, I like, like that. Like, like, like it, 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 it's like a fireman. It all starts just like at a burning house. And, like, a fireman looks down and there's, like, this little this little jeweled egg, you know, and he's like, wow, that's really cool. So he keeps it, he brings it, he gives it to his wife, but it turns out to be like one of those things from like, um, from Hellraiser where it's like, <laughs> like <laughs> it can do all kinds of demonic things. And so it passes from one person to the other. So it's called Bad Egg. I like that. <laughs> yeah, we and I got to do like, like a uh, graphic novel or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking to do it. See, I have my, I have the idea for, um, I have a bunch of film ideas, but the one I have for Friday the 13th, I mean, the Jason storyline, because, you know, hey, I've been thinking about this for a while, so it better be good. But, no, this, we're, we actually have a name for it. It's called Curse of Crystal Lake. Mm-hmm. And the Curse of Crystal Lake, we are thinking of doing um, just that with the, uh, Scott Jackson, who's this great artist who does, like, my um, T-shirts and uh, does the first Jason artwork and the poster artwork. and So he's done a lot of comic books, so we're thinking of doing that. Because, man, you know. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be perfect. You know what I'm saying? It's like. The time's right. Make it happen. King's got his graphic novel coming out. Marvel's just doing the um, Dark Tower graphic novel. That's right. There's a lot of There's a lot of good things. Yeah, it's a lot of good things. They got a Friday the Thirteenth comic, of course, is from that, mm-hmm. which is pretty powerful. I think they did a good well, job on that. Everyone's inspired me. I've come up just just from today's show. We're thinking about like the the holidays, and then you had mentioned a golem uh, about doing an Arbor Day one with a wood golem. You just go berserk on everything. The wood witch, you know, (laughs) she had a tree, (laughs) you know, and her only her arch nemesis, like summon him. Here comes the lumberjack. (laughs) 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 I'm coming to get you down. It's like an idea factory around here. (laughs) No, you could just get. You just have to get one of those ants from the Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, perfect. I'll cut one of those up. 
Just get me one of them hands. I'll cut one up right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were thinking, you know. You could, like, bridge those gaps. Because, like, horror versus fantasy world, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you could yeah. have a thing like Jason versus Harry Potter. <laughs> but, like, Harry Potter's, like, about to do a spell, and Jason, like, whacks him with a machete. <laughs> like, oh, sorry. <laughs> So, yeah, we were thinking of, of you know, we, we have a special effects show for the first Jason show. Like, I had a head of Pamela Voorhees. Nice. It, like, awesome. just, like, drips blood. No, it's mm-hmm. awesome. They're made by Bump in the Night Production. Mm-hmm. And oh, uh, they they have a mic stand, which is, like, a severed leg. and um, <laughs> You know, and the whole set, it's like we're trying to make it look like, um, you know, you're in the summer camp kind of environment. And, um, yeah, so, uh, one of the things, well, no, I mean, I was thinking of different ideas. I was thinking it would be a good idea to just line up little Harry Potters and just kind of kick them off the stage. <laughs> but, no, cut them up with, like, you know, cut them up with a machete, I think. That's right. Oh, or hobbits. Come on. <laughs> with some freaking hobbits. Frodo, oh, no, here you go, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that over there? Little hobbits just kick him right off the stage. <laughs> well, you can what, Pippin? Come here, Pippin! Wham! Give, up. Give me a break. Well, there you go. You got Stay the. You got Sam. Though. Hey, you got the hobbit. No, I mean, and this freaking Pippin, man. You should see. <laughs> you should see the tail that guy gets. Give me a break, man. You ever go to an L O T R convention? Man, it's lined up. Yeah, he's got tail. He's got girl coming. You know. Twelve year old to hundred and twenty. <laughs> They're wheeling him in there. They got girls on IV. Pippin, what's your room number? <laughs> I'll be sitting there, you know, I'm like sitting there at the bar, you know. I was Jason. You know, I've got like a brandy and I'm like drunk. You know, so, you know, you should see what I end up with. Oh, I don't even want to start. Oh my god. <laughs> no, actually I'm 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 a happily married man, but but Pippin gets a lot of tail up there. <laughs> but you him. know who gets tail? How about that Alex Vincent? That Chucky guy. Little Chucky. Oh, really? He, oh, man. Oh, he's, he's always CB and huh? me. He CBs me every time. Oh. <laughs> you know, little Jason gets CB by Chucky, man. Well, there you go. You got uh, you got Chucky and the Leprechaun versus the Hobbits. <laughs> <laughs> I never met the, the Leprechaun, but I did meet the R2-D2 guy. That little guy. Oh, man. Oh, he's, he's, oh, the women. You. <laughs> you know those Brits, you know, they have a little oh. charm and all that. Oh, hey. yeah. well, it's probably Christopher Lee, probably, you know, get to his share. He's like, it's magic. Are you delicious? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep, part two, you know. Well, no, the horror cons are fun, man, I love them. Yeah, we'll have to uh, start going to some here. You got any That's coming up? A crowdier crowd, though, than like the, the science fiction or like the fantasy convention. <laughs> <laughs> no, horror people, man. That's the best, man. You just have fun. It's just yeah. fun, man. I mean, and, you know, I, I've been at some seriously crazy cons where it's like, you know, I, I remember one time we were all like late in the bar. There was the two Jedi girls were there, you know, uh, Boba Fett, the guy who played Boba Fett, Daniel Logan or whatever his name is, mm-hmm. was there. Uh, the kid from Lassie was there. Wow. Uh, the, the freaking soup Nazi from Seinfeld <laughs> was there. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, the guy who played the Uruk High in, in, in Lord of the Rings and, and um, Sauron, the big Sauron guy, these guys are like, New Zealanders, they were all, it was, it was crazy. You know, <laughs> like these, 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 you know, all getting drunk, and I was playing the piano, and it was fun. <laughs> That's your typical kind of thing. But also, one horror convention, I, I, I got to um, uh, uh, be the piano player at a wedding of two very dedicated horror fans who got to have uh, Bill Mosley as the best man mm-hmm. and oh, Doug awesome. Bradley. Yeah, so uh-huh. Bradley gave the sermon, man. I mean, you know, he married them because he, he's ordained. And he was like, you know, he was like, are you prepared to enter into the <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was like, 
I was like so scared I couldn't play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Was that brawls? Well, oh. you know who's good with the brawls is is is, is Big Andrew, Andrew oh, Bernard. Really? <laughs> because uh, when we were in the UK, you know, following, you know, Andrew is is a, is a big inspiration for me. I got to admit, because at every convention that I'm at, he's always extends himself to the fans like really great, not just the young pretty girl ones, but you know everybody. And he like, I've been in, you know. Like, uh, you know, he'll just buy drinks for everyone at the bar. He's very, he's very good with people. And he, um, well, one time though, okay, we were at this one and the A team, members of the A team were there, okay? <laughs> so they didn't have, they didn't have Mr. T and of course, um, the, the, the um, general guy who passed away. So they had the other two guys. They had Face and what the other guy, I can't remember. But, um, so they had the two guys. And one guy is there, and, you know, good thing I don't remember his name. But anyway, so Andrew walks up to him all like, hey, you know, I really respected you for, for a long time, and, and I think you're a great actor. And he goes to shake his hand, and the guy will not shake his hand. Whoa. And he continues to smoke this nasty cigar, filling up the whole bar with his nasty smell, and he looks like he's getting dizzy at the same time, and he won't shake. And so Andrew's like, you're not going to shake my hand after I just said, you know, how much I respect you, and the guy's like, uh, the guy's like, uh, well, that's my prerogative. So Andrew, Andrew just goes, oh no, man, oh, he just, Andrew, we, Andrew got a bit angry, but there was no brawl there. I have to admit, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew had every right to be, to be uh, upset. But uh, was it the guy that played in Starbuck or the other guy? <laughs> the, the, they call him Face. Like, oh, okay, that was the guy that was rude to him. Well, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to start some crazy gossip here. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> I, just I don't know. Maybe he felt some. I don't know why he doesn't. Why he wouldn't what? shake my buddy's hand? But hey, he should have. But um, yeah. I mean, I, I, there's there's uh there's there's a one time we were at a con and uh, you know Kane Hodder and Ken Kersey were there at the same convention and. The, at the same convention, we were at this that big uh, kind of interview panel, and they um, they uh, at one point one fan asked a question, kind of challenging them, you know, like like uh, as to whether Kane should have been in Freddy vs Jason and was he upset about it, and immediately Dave Hagen, who runs that convention, told the guy to be quiet, you know, mm -hmm. he was like, stop. But the guy wouldn't stop, so he just kept going. And he's like, Kane, why aren't you sitting next to Ken? And all this, you know, like ridiculous stuff. Mm -hmm. Because in all honesty, Kane and Ken, they, they've worked together professionally, and they've had their, uh, you know, they've had, um, you know, professional challenges together, but they, they're not, they have no animosity for each other at all. Mm -hmm. They're very, they're good friends, actually. And uh, so this guy said that, and he, and so... The whole place just fell. Asshole, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> they called over security and they just picked this guy up and just took him out of the place. It was sick, man. Oh, whoa. Uh, Smarty, <laughs> Smarty Birdfest here in our uh, chat room. He mentions that it was uh, Murdoch was the other uh, person in the team. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, <laughs> yes. Well, I'll say I don't know which one it was. No, actually, the other one guy was was really cool, so I don't know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, things happen, you know, I just call them like I see them. But, um, no, Andrew, you know, is, is, is a great character to be around, and it's always it's always inspiring to be around some of these Jasons. Ted White uh, is who was Jason 4, Four yeah. and um, he um, was actually also John Wayne's stunt double for like 25 years, and wow. you know, just having him around like just raises our property value. The man is is a is a true actor from the golden days of film, and it's mm -hmm. just you know, just being around someone like that. And Betsy Palmer is another person who's a constant inspiration to me because I've done signing lines with Betsy 
where we'll be going, oh gosh, five, six hours without stopping, sometimes more. I mean, mm -hmm. and Betsy is up there with so much energy greeting each fan and finding something about each person so wonderful. I mean, she's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember I, having to get up and actually <laughs> stop a line, you know, just say, look, the, the woman's done, you know. Okay, you know, at the end, these people were like, but we're leaving, we're not going to be here tomorrow. You know, so we had to just, whoever was going to be there tomorrow had to leave, you know. <laughs> but, you know she, she's incredible, and, uh, you know, and I just learned from, from people like that that it's really about the fans, it's not about us, you know, about them, just bounce off that energy. And uh, there's a lot of great stuff coming up. You got, um, First of all, there's that Fangoria Weekend of Horrors with the Vampire mm -hmm. Party. Then you got Beer Fest is coming up in Texas. Mm -hmm. And Beer Fest is going to be a mind blower event because you got all four actors <laughs> who played Leatherface are going to be oh, there. Cool. Wow. Okay, you got Bill Johnson, you got you got Gunnar Hansen, you got R.A. Mihailov, and you got Andrew Bernarski. And they're all going to be there. Plus, Freak 13 is going to be there, so I'm going to get up on stage and sing Mother and Die Die My Darling and Andrew mm -hmm. up there, and, you know, we're going to go nuts, and there's, there's a rumor, <laughs> there's a rumor that Vinnie Hall, who's the drummer of Pantera, who was, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. will be there, too. Either we're hoping, now this is totally, totally we're hoping with an ensemble of his own. I don't want to say what it will be, but that may or may not happen. Uh, we're just hoping, hoping, hoping that that's going to happen. Now, when is that? That's going to be at the end of March. That's in March. So it's coming up, and that's in uh, in Texas. And then, uh, you know, another big one is that Horror Hound weekend. That's going to be in Indianapolis for uh, all of your our fan listeners who are up in Indianapolis in that area, that's going to be happening. That's run by Horror Hound Magazine, and they're going to be doing a, an event there, and they got a lot of great guests coming. So, you know, definitely uh, uh, 2007's got a lot of conventions. Uh, we got a caller here. Who is this? Uh, uh, you're calling him the show. Who are you? <laughs> uh, my name's James. All right, you're on air with uh, Ari Lehman. You got a question? Hey, how you doing, man? Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, you're on in your head, uh, without your head. Uh, all right, he hung up. <laughs> <laughs> without his head. <laughs> well, thanks for calling in. That was, uh, that was a great question. <laughs> and a lot to the show. Maybe I just scared him, you know. <laughs> I think so. That could be. Scared of Jason. <laughs> you know. You know, you, you know, here in my lair beneath Crystal Lake, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's gonna be icy waters. <laughs> you know, as I as I cast my gaze over the the piles of cadavers and mm -hmm. and you know corpses, mm -hmm. I kind of wonder whether the floor has always been this color red or whether it just got that way after so long. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we really appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, anything you want to uh, tell fans out there before I let you go? Just let them know and remember, Jason is watching. <laughs> and we'd love to, uh, to uh, hear from them at firstjason.com, at uh, MySpace, Creatures of Crystal Lake. And uh, it's yours truly, the boy in the lake, the slime child, <laughs> the muck monster. And I want to say, um, without your head is awesome and rules the airwaves of the internet. Oh man! It shall destroy all. Oh man! He just moved up into our favorite Tommy. guest of all time now. That's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. Oh, thank you. had fun. Oh, we had a blast. You know, it feels like we should, uh, you know, have a beer or two, but you know, <laughs> oh yeah, no, we'll have one through the like. Here, I'm trying to hand one through the screen. It's not working. <laughs> I'm sorry, John doesn't drink anyway. No, he's a strange oh. guy. You get him a root beer. Yeah. Those are good. Those are good. Root beers are good. Oh, so, yeah, uh, 
us. Yes. Let me know, you know, just but just email me, let me know how it all works out. Yeah, we'll get the archive up tonight and um I'll send you all the info. We'll put up all the links on the uh, website. Excellent. This is Larry Zerner, Shelley from Friday 13.3, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com.